I welcome all of you for today's webinar and topic for today's webinar, as Patricia said, and you can see here, filter WRG files and graded time series data uh, and how we can use that in our wind farm uh, site development. Okay, I also thanks uh, to Oriol Lakeo uh, for joining today's webinar and he will be helping us uh, to answer uh, any technical doubts. Okay, in today's session, we will be talking about uh, the introduction about blocks, uh, the filtering option of WRG files, graded time series, then when to use blocks product. And we at the end, we will see how to launch blocks on interface and how to download uh, the data from blocks. Run. Okay, let us start again with the same uh, graphics. You can see the life cycle of any wind farm project, which is about 25 years, uh, but the actual wind farm development starts much earlier uh, than the construction of the real uh, turbines in a wind farm. So you can see the uh, this actual site development starts about five years before the actual construction. And depending on the site, uh, site depending on the stage of project development, whether it's be a early stage prospection or free feasibility, feasibility studies, even uh, during the designing and operation of wind farm, you can see uh, these are our products and uh, we can see, uh, we, we can use these products. I mean, maps, uh, virtual mast, uh, the tab file will be output uh, 10 minutes LES data then the hourly time series data, uh, then farm extremes. So all these are the products depending on the stage of project development we can use. use. In today's session, as we are discussing about blocks, you can see blocks we can use for pre-feasibility, feasibility and designing of any wind farm. And also blocks can be used uh, during the operation uh, in the operational wind farms. Okay, I mean, uh, as we discussed about this slide in some previous webinar, but as I can see, there are some new guests. So let us revise again. So uh, we are using uh, ERFI, CFSR, and MERA2 reanalysis data as a main input. In addition, we are uh, giving uh, terrain information from SRTM that will be at 100 meter resolution, then roughness information from globe cover, which will be at 300 meter resolution. So we are ingesting all these three details to work and we are downscaling this macro scale information to mesoscale level. At mesoscale, we are delivering hourly time series data and also wind maps at three and one kilometer resolution. We are further downscaling this mesoscale information uh, to micro scale level. At micro scale level, the resolution will be 100 meters and we are delivering farm WRG files, LES 10 minutes time series data, extremes and blocks product at this uh, micro scale level. Okay, before going to next slide, one more message. I mean, you can see here in Vortex, we are using nesting grid zooming approach. And you can see our first domain, uh, which is with the blue box, you can see here. And the uh, these green dots are reanalysis data. So you can see we are not just uh, taking reference of nearest node point of reanalysis data or just the four corners of that subgrid. But we are referring several hundreds of uh, node point information from reanalysis data as an input. And then we start the downscaling. I mean, every time the domain size will be one ninth lesser, uh, shorter, and the resolution will be three times better. Okay, so then we, uh, we will start at nine kilometer, three kilometer, one kilometer, and we will be reaching at 100 meter position. Okay, so what exactly uh, we achieve uh, with such a big domain? I mean, we are just ensuring the inflow wind patterns uh, within that area or region which must be affecting wind at my client's location. Okay, then uh, let us uh, start uh, about the blocks. So now it's time for the uh, first polling question. Uh, Patricia, can you please launch the uh, polling question? Okay, so I request all of you, uh, please answer. Uh, uh, blocks are used as an alternative to WASP and CFD tool or as an input to WindPro and OpenWind or uh, both options are correct. Okay, I request all of you, please answer uh, any uh, single choice I mean. Uh, 
Patricia, can you please show the results? Or oh, it's taking a long time, I think. Uh, okay, I mean, some of you are saying that uh, uh, it is an alternative to WASP CFD tool. Some of you are saying it's uh, the input to WinPro and OpenWin. And most of you are saying it is the uh, I mean, the options here, option A and B uh, are the correct options. Okay. Let us uh, see the answer in next slide. Okay. So as you can see here, uh, blocks is nothing but uh, the evolution of a farm product. In a farm product, we are delivering WRG files at 100 meter resolution. Okay. But uh, we can say the problem is that mostly the uh, wind analyst looks for the uh, wind uh, averaged information in WRG file, also the time series information. So with blocks, we have tried to combine uh, both these options. I mean, uh, blocks is the combination of farm and series product. Okay, so blocks is giving information for area and we are covering all heights, uh, so we can call it as information uh, for a space or a three dimensional information. Then uh, we are adding one more uh, variant, we call it as a time variant. And uh, it is a kind of one more dimension, I mean. So uh, we, in a blocks, we are able to provide four dimensional information or a 4D information. And the output of blocks product is uh, nothing but WRG files and time series data. And that is the reason uh, the name of today's webinar is a filter WRG files and graded time series data, which is nothing but output of blocks product. So here onwards, we will be discussing about uh, blocks product. Okay, let us have a look on some features of blocks. I mean, we can launch a blocks run for area up to 1,500 square kilometer. Resolution will be 100 meter, uh, spatial resolution. Then we will be covering all uh, heights. I mean, 50 meter uh, to 300 meters, whatever uh, wind, uh, wind industry standard heights will be covered uh, in this uh, region I mean okay and then what will be output output first will be the WRG files so you will get a WRG file for all these 1500 square kilometer area you will also get uh, GIS layers for a uh, different matrix for mean speed for temperature for density for turbulence for whatever matrix you need uh, the map layers you can download the GIS layers I mean okay then as I as uh, we discussed in previous slide uh, the blocks is a combination of WRG plus time series data. So one can download a time series data for each of the node point of uh, this uh, blocks area. Okay, and then uh, whenever you want to extract the tab file output uh, for any of these points, uh, we can extract uh, the wind distribution information in a tab file. Okay, then uh, suppose you have a metmast uh, for calibration of blocks run, uh, we definitely can use uh, the uh, metmast information uh, to calibrate uh, the blocks output. Okay, and the important thing here is that uh, usually we are used to calibrate uh, the averaged information, uh, maybe GIS layers or WRG files. Uh, sometimes we can calibrate uh, time series information, but uh, as far as blocks are considered, it's a combination of both these products. We need to calibrate averaged information also in a WRG file or GIS layer. At the same time, we need to calibrate uh, time series information also. So we call it as a 4D remodeling. And uh, this is the uh, technology which we, we are developing for last several years and uh, which is used and validated by uh, many users, I mean. Uh, so the thing, as we know, I mean, uh, there are some simple uh, linear regression uh, MCP tools, there are some matrix methods, but the problem with these tools are that when we want to improve one wind matrix, there is a possibility that we are uh, making, uh, we are uh, disturbing the other matrix, I mean. And uh, I mean, as we are getting all these output, uh, suppose if uh, somebody is using GIS layers, uh, for him, mean speed and bias information is important. If somebody is using uh, time series information, he might be interested in hourly, daily, monthly correlations of his time series. If somebody is using tab file output from the blocks run, he might be interested in uh, Webull A and K matrix, I mean. So so we need uh, all these metrics is really important and having the same importance maybe 10 15 years back uh, that time the uh, the wind industry uh, was only depend or was only referring mean speed information nobody was bothered about 
about the uh, even uh, wind direction, about the turbulence, extremes. Nobody was that careful on that time. But now the wind industry is matured, and they want to use all. They are they know how to use all these wind matrix for different uh, applications. I mean, while they are doing the analysis. So and this 4D remodeling helps to improve all these wind matrix at a time. Okay, and we can uh, cross check or validate. Suppose if somebody is having another met must here, we can use one met must for the calibration of blocks output, and the result of calibrated blocks output can be validated at a second met must. I mean, for all the matrix. Okay, now let us see about uh, the filtering options available in blocks run and the graded time series. Okay, uh, before that, it's time for a second polling question. Are you interested in filtering of WRG and GIS output? I request, uh, please answer. Okay, I can see uh, all of you are saying that uh, you are interested in a filtering option. So let us have a look uh, what filtering options we have in Blocks product. Okay, so first uh, we can filter out WRG output uh, day night wise. I mean WRG for a day, WRG for a night. Uh, same way we can filter uh, the WRG output uh, season wise because as uh, many of you are from India and Southeast Asia, and we know uh, during the monsoon season, uh, we get the dominant wind, I mean, so almost 70-80% of energy uh, from the wind farms we get uh, during the monsoon period. And many times the wind analysts from this region, they want to study the energy uh, for the seasonal basis, I mean, so they can request the seasonal WRG file uh, just to covering monsoon period from June, July, August and September months, I mean. Sometimes some of you must be interested in a return monsoon period, those may be October, November, and December. Okay, so, and then there are some more filters also. We can uh, filter a WRG output uh, based on the sector-wise filtering, I mean. Because now, whenever we want to study uh, any new uh, site i mean usually mostly we are going to have some nearby wind farm and we must be ex expecting some wakes from that wind farm so we can filter out that particular sector uh, wrg file and we can uh, do the analysis uh, by applying the wake effect for that particular sector and uh, the balance remaining sectors uh, without the uh, wake effect so we can use the sector wise filter then uh, you can see here uh, this is the typical energy uh, demand graph for a day and you can see there are morning peak from 8 to 10 a.m. and uh, there is a evening peak from 6 to 10 p.m. And in blocks run as we are saving all timestamp uh, time stamp information, uh, we are able to uh, filter out this WRG uh, for uh, specific to these hours, I mean. So WRG file covering just uh, this morning peak and evening peak from 8 to 10 morning and evening 6 to 10 p.m. So, and we can analyze how much energy we have uh, during the uh, peak energy demand hours. Okay, and not only these uh, filters, but there are some more filters. We call it as a meteorological uh, filters based on the meteorological conditions. So we can filter out uh, the output for specific wind speed, for direction, for temperature, for density, for whatever matrix I mean. Uh, just a couple of months back, one of uh, our client from Southeast Asia again, he came and he they were interested to have WRG output uh, for specific temperature. I mean, they asked us uh, to create a w WRG file just to cover the temperatures above 34 degrees because actually they were expecting... Uh, they were uh, experiencing some uh, heat waves and they wanted to study how much energy wind energy they uh, have uh, from their new wind farm uh, during the heat wave uh, heat wave periods i mean so uh, for that particular analysis they asked us uh, uh, this wrg output uh, with that particular uh, criteria okay and uh, as uh, i'm saying uh, frequently uh, in blocks run we are able to save all timestamp information or uh, we can say simply we are saving 
all simulations i mean and as we are having time series information which is uh, now day by day uh, trend is changing and wind analysts want to study energy analysis based on the time series information uh, than the averaged information suppose uh, if we have a time series information uh, in this example uh, let us see this is the uh, wind power wind power series i can say and this particular turbine which will be cut off at uh, 25 meter per second and then it will recut in at 22 meter per second okay and then you can you can see here at this particular time stamp uh, as the wind uh, crosses this limit uh, the turbine will be uh, cut off and then it will be restart uh, at this particular point so you can see because uh, until that point the wind speed never touch uh, to the 22 meter per second and they cannot keep this region small also otherwise if the wind is flowing within that region the turbine will go crazy and uh, it will uh, cut off and cut in uh, frequently and it can have a lot of uh, mechanical loads on the turbine that is the reason they have uh, kept this much limit and uh, suppose uh, actually uh, from uh, this time stamp i can say from morning 3 am till evening 5 evening 5 uh, if we have done the analysis based on the averaged information we might have think all this uh, is a energy from my wind farm but actually uh, when we are doing analysis based on the time series information uh, i mean uh, we will come we, we will know that this uh, even though the wind speed is there this is not actually energy my turbine is going to capture and not only this and they are calling this as a hysteresis losses so not only this but if somebody is doing analysis by using time series information he can take care of uh, such a small small things and good thing about blocks is that uh, blocks is able to provide time series information at each and every node point of the blocks area okay and then uh, by default uh, the blocks will be giving one year of time series data so uh, that one year uh, we can call it as a custom one year which wind analyst can select uh, whether he want time series for 2020 or 2015 whatever period i mean he can uh, just uh, decide which one year period he want and tool will uh, prepare uh, the blocks will prepare that particular period time series then there is second option which is mostly uh, used by the wind analyst the long term year so as uh, many of you already uh, worked with les so you, you might be aware about the long term year so uh, suppose this is the uh, long term wind information available for this particular site uh, from 97 uh, to 2017 and then a tool will prepare uh, several statistics for this long term period maybe mean speed mean direction wavebull a and k parameters minimum maximum wind and then it will create uh, one year of subset and it will calculate that the same uh, matrix for that one year period and then it will be moving that one year period day by day actually and then it will search which is that one year period has the same numbers as the long term uh, numbers or which has the minimum difference with the long term and then tool will do the optimization uh, so in this particular case it was 2008 to 2009 and then it will start down scaling and preparing time series information for this specific period it will be having uh, uh, the 30 minutes time series data it will have uh, mean speed column uh, direction column temperature density and air st i mean stability parameter okay then when we compare uh, this uh, series with the long term series long term series is hourly series this particular series is Uh, 30 minutes in a temporal scale then the long term series will be maybe you can have one or two points and it will be uh, for 3 uh, km spatial resolution and this will be uh, you will having this series at each node point and it will be at 100 m resolution then as we discussed we are able to calibrate uh, this time series output also uh, if the metmast information is available okay and as we are discussing the blocks is nothing but evolution of farm product and uh, i many of you already uh, aware and used uh, farms and most of our customers they are uh, consistently using extensively using i mean the farms output and they are validating also so uh, but still uh, as uh, we are we have developed uh, this a uh, new product uh, during the launch uh, we validated the non calibrated output at about 46 sites 
uh, without uh, using the one met mask. So we uh, validated non-calibrated output and you can see these are the results. And then uh, about 10 sites uh, we used three met masks for calibration purpose. And then we uh, cross check the calibrated output at a fourth met mask. And you can see the results. I mean, uh, when uh, you see, uh, the, suppose you see the daily correlations uh, with the model output, it was 0 0.85. And you can see uh, with the calibration, how it improves, I mean. Then we also, uh, validated a different other metrics, root mean square error, the histogram normalized error, then the absolute error you can see, which was about 6% on these 56 sites uh, without uh, the calibration for the model output. And then uh, by using the MetMast information for calibration, uh, you can see the, the, the absolute error was uh, decreased uh, drastically. You can see it was with three MetMast, it was uh, less than 3%. And then we have one complete document uh, for this uh, validation study. And uh, we will, uh, in a mail, we will be sharing that document. You can have a look on that. OK, then it comes uh, when we can use uh, the uh, blocks run. OK, now it's time for the third polling question. So which blocks deliverables uh, you would use more? You, whether you will be using GIS files, WRG files, or time series information. Okay, I can see some of you are saying WRG files and most of you are saying the time series information. Okay, so let us see uh, when we can use blocks in the next slide. Okay, so when we can use, I mean, uh, whenever uh, somebody wants uh, the WRG file information also and time series information, uh, he can go for the blocks run. Uh, whenever uh, the filtering comes, uh, filtering is important for any specific uh, criteria or for any specific study, uh, he can go for uh, the blocks run as the blocks is having filtering options for WRG. We can use uh, those filtering options. So whenever, <coughs> sorry, so whenever uh, you are interested to have a time series information at each of the uh, proposed WTG position, maybe for microsighting or maybe uh, the operate, operational wind turbine positions, I mean, uh, you can go for the blocks run. Okay, uh, whether you have a major data, we can definitely use that major data for calibration of blocks uh, by using the 4D remodeling. Or even if you don't have a major data, still you can go for the blocks run. Okay, whether you are doing the feasibility studies, uh, you can use the blocks run or even uh, in the operational wind farms uh, for the performance assessment of uh, the wind farm level and at uh, each uh, wind turbine position, you can go for the blocks run. Okay, then uh, with help of blocks, we are uh, able to normally, I mean, this is the requirement from the sector. I mean, most of the time, uh, the wind analyst comes to us and this, he says, okay, we have measurement at this particular point and we want to develop or study uh, the site uh, area, which is about 10, 15, 20 kilometers uh, from the Metmast uh, location. And uh, these blocks uh, run can help us to transmit this measured data from one point to another and over a distance I can say and we can also transmit in a time also. So let us see uh, with one example. This is again a real case example uh, from Vietnam. So one of client uh, just uh, last month we calculated block scan for them and you can see uh, they have one metmast uh, which is uh, measuring wind from 2016. They have constructed this wind, wind farm in 2019. And uh, they come to us and they wanted uh, the calibrated time series data 
at each of these wind turbine position for uh, two years actually 2020 and 2021 so we uh, launched blocks run and we used a uh, 2016 to 18 information from this met must which was a, a completely wake free uh, measurement and then there was some another met must uh, which which was in a public domain which was about uh, 20 kilometers from their site and we used uh, this met must information for 2013 and 14 uh, to calibrate so by using these two uh, major data from two metmast uh, for different periods we calibrated blocks run and we delivered them time series uh, calibrated time series for another years i mean 2020 and 2021 by default as i said it was uh, for one year but they were ready to pay and uh, so we calculated two years and uh, which they have used for the performance assessment of uh, individual turbines and at wind farm level also Okay, let us see uh, the uh, interface and how we can launch the blocks run on interface. Okay, so uh, I mean, this is our interface and you can see uh, when we move the cursor, uh, the wind speed is changing. This particular uh, map layer is at one kilometer resolution and at 100 meter height, I mean. Same way you can see uh, for 150 meter and 200 meter height also, uh, you can see even solar map also. Many times uh, we are interested in anomaly information for uh, some past period. Maybe in the current year, you will see uh, for previous month, uh, February will be updated soon. I mean, in last years, we can see uh, for last year, we can see the quarter wise anomalies, we can see full year anomaly and some previous years also for uh, 2020 and uh, 2019 also. Same way, uh, every month we are updating uh, forecasted anomalies for next three months. Now it is available for February, March and April. So whenever uh, you have a time, you can just or if you are interested in anomaly information for a previous a period or future next three months you can just click on this and you can use that information okay then these are the three tabs i mean uh, runs new and free in runs you can see the list of runs which are uh, i have submitted in my account or those are calculated in my account account so this is the list of all the runs uh, in my account then if i click on the new I can request hourly time series data. I can request the map. I can request the virtual mast. The wind distribution tab files will be output. Farm WRG files, even icing, uh, 10 minutes LES data, extremes, uh, series. Uh, yeah, I mean, the in a solar also, we have a series a map and a typical meteorological year. Okay, as we are discussing today about blocks, uh, let us see how we can launch the blocks run. Okay, so we can just uh, select the location. Let us go somewhere in Philippines. Okay, and uh, so uh, we can change the size of this box. You can see the maximum area is 500 square kilometers. Uh, even uh, we can rotate this box uh, just to ensure uh, that our uh, area of interest is covered. Uh, within this box and then uh, there is another option i mean you can just uh, prepare a kmz file for your area and you can upload that kmz file here uh, just by clicking and then you can just match the box area with your kmz file okay like way uh, you can select the area Okay, this was the uh, standard size. There are two sizes. I mean, as we are discussing, it can cover up to 1,500 square kilometers. If you click on the large option, uh, you can see the maximum area will change. Uh, it will be now 1,500 square kilometers. So let us see for the standard option now. Okay, then uh, the source will be ERAFI, resolution will be 100 meters. Uh, you can select whether if you have a major data, you can click on yes. And once you submit, you will have to upload a data for calibration. If you don't have, uh, you can select no. Okay, the size we already looked, standard size up to 500 square kilometers, large size up to 1,500 square kilometers. 
for time series uh, there are two options i mean a uh, user can go for the customs he just have to give the starting date uh, for that uh, customized one year period or second option he can go for the long term year so if he click uh, the long term year and we discussed how a tool uh, search for the long term year or the long term representative year okay then once we submit uh, it will take about 5 days and uh, your calculations or blocks will be ready to download information so let us have a look on the uh, free uh, block sample so how we can download data from the blocks okay so in a blocks uh, we can download uh, two layers i mean uh, gis layers as well as uh, wrg and wrb file layers okay and uh, now uh, we can select uh, whatever matrix we want uh, the wind speed turbulence mean turbulence temperature density so uh, we can select that matrix we can select uh, the height uh, it can go up uh, any height i mean so let us say uh, 150 meters or 120 meters okay then uh, if we have used a data for calibration purpose we there will be two options you want to download calibrated layer or you want to download non calibrated layer so now it is non calibrated and then the next option is the filtering option i mean so uh, we can see there are different filters day wise filters night uh, season wise filter for summer winter for wind speeds for uh, sector wise filters and not only these a uh, few filters i mean we have just kept uh, these few filters here uh, those are mostly used and uh, just to make it uh, the interface user friendly and simple otherwise if you click on the complete help you will see the list of filters and uh, i mean whatever filters uh, you want to uh, whatever way you want to filter out the wrg output uh, there are different ways available or simply uh, you can email us uh, in which way you want to filter and my technical team uh, at the back back end they will configure how to uh, filter out uh, your uh, to uh, by using your criteria for filtering and once you submit uh, maybe it will take some minutes and you will uh, able to download that uh, wrb file or you can download a wrg file in a zip folder okay same way uh, you can request a time series data also suppose if you take uh, the coordinates here uh, you can just select the coordinate and uh, you can select uh, height whatever height you want okay then uh, the calibrated non calibrated and once you submit in some minutes uh, the time series information will be ready uh, for this particular coordinates to download okay now already there are two uh, series i think at uh, 100 meter height i mean so uh, you can just download the time series information from here okay so this was about interface and let me share again okay so uh, and uh, there is one uh, tutorial is also available uh, this is the link for that tutorial uh, you can go here uh, maybe in a email we will send you this link and uh, this is a good tutorial uh, done by uh, one of my colleague and you can just have a look on this uh, which will help you how to uh, submit the blocks run how to download data from uh, from blocks run uh, on our interface okay so this was from my side and uh, now we can take some questions thank you danaji it was a very very nice and very interesting uh, presentation um we have one question here uh, jack is asking uh, well it's saying hi patty like excellent presentation is it possible to forecast the quantity of electricity used for medium and long term electricity trading no i mean uh, all this product we are giving the past information i mean whenever we are saying that time series information the time series information we are providing for the past uh, period i mean uh, if so he is interested uh, I, i i just not notice the name but if he is interested in a forecasting uh, i don't know about time series but with help of uh, there are two uh, spin up companies i mean from vortex group only siraco uh, they are giving uh, the short term forecasting for uh, next 7 days and uh, there is one another company called climate scale uh, this is again a vortex group company uh, from climate scale we are giving uh, the uh, forecasted information uh, for a long term i mean for next 20 years 50 years up to 100 years i mean 
Um, okay, thank you, Danaji, and thank you, Jack, for your question. Um, uh, there are no not so many questions, so you did an excellent presentation because everybody understood everything, <laughs> I mm -hmm. guess. Um, well, if um, someone of, of you attending today's webinar ha still have one question, we we still have some minutes to to end the webinar, so you still have time. Um, you can you can ask your question here in the Q and A section, or uh, um, you can uh, raise your hand, and and we have we, we can have a small talk if you prefer. And so if uh, you can raise your hand here or write your questions in the Q and A section, I don't know if Uriol wants to wants to add something to your to your presentation. Um, well, if there's no no questions, uh, I find uh, Danaji's presentation very good with lots of details on it. So, as he mentioned, we have a document explaining uh, all the blocks uh, details uh, with the validation at the end, and uh, that's a document you can download from our website. You can find also a filtering uh, technical document where you can find all the details on how the filtering works, uh, how you can make your own filtering uh, files. And uh, just uh, remember you that uh, for filtering, we have uh, default options on the website with a drop down menu when you request a time series, but you can also request uh, by email to our technical team your own your own uh, filtering option so we can make it for for you at at first if, if you are not used to 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 work with the vortex filtering files so i think we have a, a question from Shravan kumar um, he says I joined a bit late and missed the BRG filtering part. Is it possible to show what it is quickly? Well, I, um, we will have this, this presentation recorded. We also have uh, these technical files, but uh, explaining it uh, short is that you, uh, for, uh, we save all the simulations so we can filter the time steps we are interested in and later on process that to generate the WRG files or GIS files based on that uh, selection of time steps we were interested in. And that applies, for example, day or night cycle, summer, winter, or any other sector-wise filtering or any other meteorological variables conditioning filter. OK. Um, perfect. Thank you, Uriel. Uh, someone is asking here in the chat um, how it will help us in, in complex terrain. How blocks will will help uh, the the users in complex terrain? I mean. Okay, for um, the the technology that's uh, that's back. Uh, blocks is the same technology as as farm so it can go up to 100 meter resolution so if you are used to farm then you 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 will get the same technology as in blocks okay that said uh the remodeling technology uh, for the remodeling uh has been uh, improved on on blocks so that uh, each time step is uh, also calibrated the same as farm remodeling but uh now we the the, the way we are um transmitting the information through the space is a uh, is better and it's not only based on distance or topography but we also have uh, other statistical parameters that that uh, gives more more precision on 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 the on the on the information that through through the space. So that 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 certainly would help in complex terrains where where observations are available. Yes, and just to add, uh, 
I mean, uh, in a complex terrain as in a blocks, we are using a top down approach. So we, we start downscaling from top and we are using the measurements uh, just to calibrate uh, that output. Uh, I mean, uh, usually with the micro tools as you are using the uh, bottom up approach. And so there is more much uh, limitations, I mean, which are definitely taken care uh, in our uh, top down approach. And we are just using uh, the calibration uh, or uh, just the just the calibration and we are transmitting that calibration to throughout area i mean so uh, because of the top down approach definitely we have a good opportunity uh, to uh, uh, horizontal extrapolate in a complex terrain also with help of blocks the averaged information and time series information okay perfect um thank you Uriol. and then we have a, a last question from Stravan Kumar, uh, he has another question. Is uh, can we expect calibration of WRG files with mass data after creating the uh, WRG instead of loading data during placing the order? Um, okay. Um, uh, once once you request the the run, uh, there's an option where you can you have to select. Uh, if you are going to use calibrated data or not calibrated data, OK? Um, when at that time you you have defined if you will use or not uh, data for calibration, OK? And how if you place uh, you are not calibrating, then by default you will not be able to, to calibrate your run. Anyway, now with blocks we are saving all the simulations. so. In fact, manually we can tweak the the run, convert it into calibrated, and upload the data and, and generate the calibrated simulations. Right? We always generate uh, in blocks. We generate the WRG files uh, on the fly at the moment uh, on demand uh, with the time series data. Right? So it's new calibration or. Uh, each, each new, yeah, each our BRG file that is requested will be generated uh, at that moment. So if a new calibration has been made uh, and your our BRG file selects that calibration, yeah, certainly it will take into account that uh, calibration. <laughs> Hope that uh, answers your question. Okay, thank you very much, Uriol and Danaji. And I think that's all. We don't have more questions, but uh, still uh, remember you can send us all your questions to, to our emails. Um, I will send you uh, an email after, after we finish the webinar with all this documentation, the tutorial video, this recording, and also the validation documents. So you can answer uh, you can reply this email if you have further questions, or you can also write to to Danaji's email, and uh, we will be very pleased to help you further with your projects and uh, with the with the model wind resource data from Vortex. So thank you very much, all of you, and good afternoon. Bye. Okay. So. I also thanks all of you for joining today's session, and thanks Patricia, thanks Oriol. Okay, see you. Thank you all for attending. Bye. Bye.